Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Why Facebook Marketing Must Be Part of Your Strategic Marketing Plan. I'm Sarah Duffy, Marketing Manager here at Intronus, and I'm happy to be moderating today's session. Before we get started with today's webinar, I'd like to go over some brief housekeeping. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them in the questions panel to the right of the GoToWebinar screen. We will be answering all your questions at the end of the webinar. At the conclusion of the webinar, you will be also prompted to complete a brief survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think as we are continuously improving the content and quality of our online events. Now, without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Stuart. Take it away, Stuart. Great, thanks, Sarah, and welcome, everyone. Happy uh, August, middle of August for you. Good to see everyone. Already on. We have a big audience on today, so we're going to get into it. I think Sarah covered all the uh, questions and answers. So if you have a question, feel free to use the the question pane throughout today's webinar. We'll like endeavor to get back to your questions uh, as we go through today's session. We do have a big audience, so I want to make sure we uh, we're conscious of time, and we're also make sure that we get the people's questions that they have uh, answered as we go through this. What I'm going to cover today is very basic and very int uh, introductory, but I think it's very very important on why Facebook should be part of your strategic marketing plan, especially as we wrap up 2017 and you start putting some thought together around what you want to do in your MSP business going into 2018. Uh, I think it's going to be more relevant in 2018 and beyond, especially the world of social media. The way it's going as the Gen, uh, no, the Gen Xers like myself uh, start looking towards retirement. God, that's awful to say. Um, you know, the millennial generation, which many of them are moving into uh, you know, strategic positions that companies start to take more of an active role in the day-to-day -day organization and running of companies. And the Gen um, the Gen Zs or the Gen Zs, depending on what part of your world that you live in, which are now just starting to enter the workforce, uh, those are the 22 and younger audience who, who never knew of a world without technology, without, uh, you know, uh, some people, some uh, industry pundits will say they never knew of a world without a smartphone or at least a world without constant internet connection. And, uh, you know, those are the ones that are starting to enter the workforce and, you know, may not be at a decision maker level yet, but soon that will be the case. And definitely some of them are starting to move into, you know, the influencer role, especially as older leaders like me turn to those type of organ, uh, to those type of people and, and asking, you know, how should we be doing things? And they, you know, again, like I said, they, they're, they're not aware of a world, you know, without, uh, you know, the technology that you know we're starting to see in today's world so i think uh, i think facebook you know is a leader in that space definitely with over two billion subscribers uh you know i believe it's an absolute must uh marketing platform and i think it needs to be looked at as a marketing platform uh versus another service out there and i think it's very very important that i think that's a diff the key differentiator between what facebook has to offer and say other platforms like Twitter or LinkedIn, I don't think they even become close to, uh, you know, the the power that Facebook has, and it's getting better. New 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 services coming in every single day. You know, for me, I'm all in on Facebook. You know, that I spend, you know, for somebody who's in my late forties, I spend an unmeasurable amount of time every day on facebook uh, and i'm going to explain some of the things that i do but there isn't a there isn't a minute of the day where my mobile device isn't you know tied into alerts uh, we've actually moved unofficially to facebook messenger as our corporate chat tool uh, why why would i need to invest in anything else like skype or other services when i have my you know all of my staff on, on facebook messenger and i can text them and message them at any time on any device without having to introduce something, a new tool that they would have to learn. Uh, and so, you know, we've adopted it at Ulistic as one of our key uh, tools to, you know, eat, to do simple text messaging and, and direct messaging back and forth. Uh, you know, we, we're, you know, constantly looking at different groups and different ways that we can, you know, get on and, um, you know, and work in, you know, promoting our brand. And uh, we're, we're going to touch on a lot of that uh, today. But I, you know, as a person myself and as a business owner, uh, and again, I'm a 40-ish type of business owner, 
And if I'm on Facebook all the time and I'm looking for pro, I'm not actually looking. I don't, let me say, I'm not actually looking for products and services, but I have been known to go through and investigate things that catch my interest uh, that I may or may not be looking for, and it just happens to be through some sort of Facebook, uh, you know, advertisement. Uh, or or discussion item or or anything you know anything like that where it just happens to catch my attention. You know, I want I want you all to start to lose this thought. You know, starting today, that Facebook is only a B to C advertising opportunity. It's definitely more than a B to C. So for those who are not familiar with the term business to consumer. You know, Facebook is definitely a business to business platform as well, and then there is lots of documented. Uh, examples where business to business transactions have occurred on Facebook and you know act, do yourself this favor go around talk to your clients and your you know even your uh, your friends and colleagues and you know ask who is on who has a Facebook account I'm going to say you're probably going to get somewhere between 88 to 95 percent of those respondents will say they have a Facebook account now some are going to not be as active as others and some people are not going to be like me that you know live on the platform continuously but you know there are you know there are almost everyone today has a facebook account and use it to some degree like some are going to be more uh involved than others but why would you not want to look at that platform as an area to market your managed services business if you know if you have a captivated audience like that and i'm not not saying that you should be you know if i say all in with facebook that doesn't mean you abandon other marketing air avenues this is definitely you know one of those you know tools in your tools in your toolkit right this is not you know do this and abandon everything else so you know why am i so bullish on facebook well again it's you know with two billion subscribers you know, it's definitely, uh, you know, the place to be. And I know there's uh, the naysayers out there. And I know there are probably one or two people on this call that are definitely, you know, fit that criteria of being a naysayer who are going to say that, you know, I don't believe Facebook is, you know, where I should be. And that, that's your prerogative. That's your call. I'm just saying that, you know, as the, as the audience and the world starts to change and social indicators start playing a more aggressive role in this, you know, in you know, positioning of our business and, you know, and how we go out attack new markets, you know, it's definitely something that needs to be considered. Like, so, you know, so does direct mail and so does canvassing and so does telemarketing and so does SEO. They're all very much, you know, very important parts of your overall marketing strategy. And again, I just, you know, when it comes to social side of marketing, I'm very bullish on Facebook as, you know, the leading platform for making uh, you know that, that all this happen, and the other thing I want you to keep in mind is, and this is a something I learned from uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about him shortly. But he had a he had a video that he did uh, a couple months ago now, where he talked about one is greater than zero, and I know that uh, some of us get up you know frustrated. And we get, uh, you know, we throw in the towel early because we're sitting there, we're building, we're trying to build a Facebook community or any other community. We're doing, you know, we're running a, a webinar or we're, you know, doing an in-person event and we get a very low attendance or low registration. I want you to keep in mind that one is greater than zero. That one person who may be on that call or as part of your Facebook community who knows who that person works for or who he or she is married to or he or she, you know, smokes cigars with on a Friday evening, you know, or whose kid, or, you know, who they know whose kids play soccer on their soccer team. You know, a lot of times we get too hung up on the numbers. And I just want you to keep in mind that sometimes one is greater than zero. And, you know, and Rome wasn't built overnight. And neither is your Facebook community or your friends list or your advertising going to be built overnight as well. This stuff takes time to do and do properly. And, you know, one of the things that Gary Vaynerchuk taught me, and if you don't know, again, if you don't know who he is, just look him up on Twitter at Gary V, you know, Google the 
the Gary Vaynerchuk Ask Gary V show, and you'll find all kinds of great stuff. Now, you know, uh, uh, what's you know, what's the uh, the organization from the '80s, the PMRC warning? You know, there's some foul language on his uh, stuff that he does, but the message is very cl crystal clear. You know, and what Gary taught me, I was sitting in the front row at an event in Phoenix a couple of years ago, and I was very fortunate to you know, be in the audience when he was speaking. And uh, and I think this is still relevant today as it was back then, where, you know, a lot of people get hung up on the quantity of contacts or members or whatever in their communities, and they don't look at the quality and I think that's, you know, goes on with lead, you know, MSPs talking about leads, you know, they wanted a qu quantity of leads, you know, every time I get a phone call from an MSP who's asking me about my services at Ulystic, it's always, how many leads can you get me this week, Stuart, instead of what is the quality of the leads you're going to get? Remember, go back to that one better than zero. I'd rather have one visitor to my website that picks up the phone and calls me versus 10,000 people hitting my website and nobody calls me. You know, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, Gary Vaynerchuk taught me that quant uh, is not the same as qual. Quality always trumps uh, quantity. Now, there are some arguments to say that you know, the more quantity you get, the better chance of getting higher quality results, and that there's some truth to that. But keep in mind that you want to shoot for quality people, not the quantity of people. And, you know, the thing is, too, keep in mind that this – this person here, the CEO or the president, the decision maker that we're all, you know, you know, clamoring to get, you know, we definitely we want to have that discussion with the decision maker. That is the person that we always want to shoot at. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm the decision maker of my company and nobody and Sean knows this, my my trusted right hand person that nobody gets to me without an appointment. So, you know, although we're all shooting out, our telemarketing has got to get to this person. And this, you know, this per the CEO, the president may not be on Facebook, but the influencers in the organization are. And that's, you know, sometimes a better target for you than trying to get the decision maker. I know, and I know there's people out there under other consultants and industry gurus will tell you that you're wasting your time unless you're speaking to the, you know, the decision maker, and there's some truth to that. But I'm talking about just getting your foot in the door. And sometimes getting your foot in the door with an influencer is better, a better opportunity for you than shooting for that decision maker. So this goes with, this goes to say with all your marketing, you know, every piece of your marketing needs to get to, you know, focus on decision makers, of course, right? But don't forget about this. Stuart Selps taught me one time, the rank and file people. Those are very, very important uh, folks to go after. So although the CEO or the president or the VP of ops or the VP of finance, the CFO, you know, they may not be, they probably are on Facebook, but, uh, you know, definitely, definitely that influencer role is uh, another opportunity for you to go after. So what, opp what opportunities exist in Facebook for you today? And I, 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 when I was building this slide deck out, I said, well, I can talk about advertising, and but there's so much more than just Facebook advertising. So the opportunities that exist on Facebook today are definitely highly targeted marketing campaigns. One thing that I really, really like, and I'm very bullish on Facebook about it, is being able to select the age group of the person I want, their, their interests, where they, you know, the types of organizations that they belong to, um, you know, um, their you know their own particular you know geography um do they work for a, a small business or a big company i can really narrow down a lot of that stuff and go highly targeted marketing campaigns with them facebook always also allows me the opportunity to demonstrate my thought leadership so those blogs and things that you're writing you can also put those up on facebook and share them on facebook uh facebook you know one of the things that we really promote at ulistic for our clients is the humanitarian side of the business, you know, um, showing the company that you are a real group of people. You're not always just sharing uh, stuff. And I know this gentleman is on the call because I see him on the list, but Chris Mikuluk 
or Michael Luck in uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina, is great at this this part of it. You know, his videos that he does. And Chris, I loved your video with uh, uh, oh, what you, you're doing, Corey Price versus the Toronto Maple Leaf guy and Sid the Kid. You know, that just showed you as a person. And you know, you, although you were talking about business continuity and disaster recovery, I think it was, or cybersecurity, uh, you used you know, you used real life examples and demonstrated you know your side of who you are. And you know, other companies are doing things such as Meet the Team Mondays, and you know showing you know pictures of you know when when fred the you know the senior tech is, is 17 years of the company they're sharing that information because companies want to know there's real people behind you know the other stuff that you can't really get when you're doing a postcard campaign or a sales letter campaign uh you know it's all about positioning as well there's some uh oh let me go back over here it's positioning you can get positioning your company in the marketplace I could tell you this: if you take this one thing away from this presentation today, for the, you know, the, the high number of people that we have on today, there's a, you know, we have a lot of people on the call. Um, if you um, take this one thing away and just execute a Facebook strategy, you will be immediately ahead of all your competitors because a lot of your competitors are going to be like maybe like some of you were, you know, 20 minutes ago, thinking ah, this Facebook thing, that's for kids. Nobody, nobody's going to care what I had for lunch or that I went to the toilet yesterday or, you know, I, I checked in at the Orlando airport, you know? Yeah, you're right. People don't care about that stuff, but what they care about is the stuff that matters to them. And if you can share information with them that matters to them and that positions you as the expert. And of course, some, you know, there's some SEO value, not a lot right now, but again, I believe that social indicators are going to play more of a role in helping with, with just with organic search optimization, I think I think the last report I read is like four percent of your search indicators come from social. So you know, let's look at ways that we can use Facebook. So we talked about advertising already. You can go and buy ads, and what I like, you know, it's but you know what I like about Facebook ads, they're still relatively cheap, but they're getting more and more expensive because you know more and more people are starting to get on it. So the whole supply and uh, you know supply and demand thing. Um, is, is definitely a, uh, you know, happening there. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, I think, I think the days of really, really cheap Facebook advertising are coming to a close. Um, there's uh, boosted posts as well um, that you can use. And it's kind of like goes and kind of hand in hand with, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the same with advertising. Uh, there's Facebook pages, which are public pages that people use for their for their companies or an individual. Uh, that's, uh, you know, part of it. Well, community pages are something I'm going to spend a little bit more time on. They're part of Facebook pages. I like what I like about community pages is, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, it's again, it allows you to position yourself as the expert. All right, and then there's events. You know, if you got events coming up like webinars or seminars or workshops, you can uh, throw on there special interest groups, so starting up groups, blog posting, and your own personal profile. So, you know, my here's my professional opinion on Facebook uh, when it comes to your own uh, profile is just be yourself. Okay, you know. That's, I don't want you to, I don't want you to try to be anybody else. I just want you to be yourself. Uh, and try to stay away from extreme point of views on either way. Uh, I've seen some really good people uh, blow themselves up on Facebook because of their political views uh, and, or, you know, religious views or things like that. Again, if you're going to be using Facebook as a business tool, I would really kind of stay clear of extremes on either side but saying that you know i've had people come to me and want to do business with me because i'm a buffalo bills fan and you know it was funny one person called me up last year and said it was between you and another marketing company which were named uh, nameless but from tampa you know and uh, you know they basically said you know the only reason i selected you store because you're a bills fan and i'm a bills fan too and I'm sure it works the other way around too. So, you know, but again, that, but that person wouldn't have an opportunity to get to know me as a person without 
you know, being hooked up with me on Facebook. And I'm, I'm going to share a bit more of that strategy a little later as we move forward here. And then remember this, that people always come first. You know, at the end of the day, businesses uh, are all about people. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you have great people in your networks and in your client base. So who needs to be in your network? So this is a, you know, this is a debatable topic for a lot of people. And I'm going to share with you my success factor. So if you don't know much about my past, uh, prior to starting Ulistic, I ran a managed services business in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And we were, you know, we grew that company to five and a half million dollars in annual revenue in seven years before I sold out of the business in 2008. And this, this philosophy is true today as much as it was back in 2008. I made sure my network consisted of clients, prospects, influencers, uh, the local media and you know industry media, and then basically anyone that I work with, socialize with, or could refer business to me. So let me expand. Let me expand on this a little bit because it's very you know people are people are going to be hesitant to add clients and prospects to their Facebook you know list. And here's why I think it's a great idea. And I do this today. I'm going to share a little secret with you, okay? There will be sometimes somebody will ask a question on Facebook about the services that Ulistic offers. And without the great help of my clients who happen to be friends of mine on Facebook, I can message them and say, hey, guys, can you chime in? on what's going on here. So I'm leveraging my clients to answer a question on something that, you know, on something that I don't know. That, by the way, do you think that person that asked the question, I don't send them a friend request immediately? Because the fact is I want that person to get to know who I am. And Bob Berg summed it up perfectly in his book, Endless Referrals, that when all things are equal, People will refer business to or do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And when you can build a, a network of clients, prospects, influencers, you know, and all these other people, they get to know you, like you, and ultimately trust you, that's when the magic starts to happen. So your Facebook network needs to consist of all these people. Yes, have your clients in there. I would encourage your engineers and your staff to do the exact same thing. Sure, there's an apparent risk to that. You can walk down the street tomorrow and there's an apparent risk to you walking down the street. And I think the thing that I want you to really understand here about you know competitiveness, because there's some people out there gonna say, oh, I don't want my techs having clients on their Facebook. And yes, that's 1992 thinking. But uh, you know, here's the fact, guys, is that their their your client information is already out on the internet. You know, people are buying the same lists. You know, I see my friend Elizabeth is on, and she knows this, is that, you know, people are buying the same list from all the same list brokers. So your client list is nothing confidential. Now, I can call up, you know, IT companies in Tampa tomorrow and ask around who, who are using your, your MSP and compile a list and then sell that list. There, it's nothing confidential. So I wouldn't worry about that factor. And you know, the other thing too about people think they're, that their clients are they're going to be stolen by their competitors just because they're on social media and they share success stories. If a client leaves because of that, you have bigger problems than just having their testimonial or something up on your Facebook page. So that you know that's old school thinking, and that, uh, I want you, you know, highly recommend you start losing that that thinking. So let's let's get into the nitty gritty because I want to you know I, I want to be conscious of your time, okay? So one of the things I like about Facebook is ads, you know, advertising platform, you know, again, it's starting to get more and more expensive. And there's some people that will argue that they've had great success. And some people have said that they've, you know, had no success. I think it comes down to the ads as well and how well your ads are and the placement of your ads. I think that has a lot to do with it. But, uh, you know, I like Facebook ads because they're, you know, the demographic that can tie into age, language, you know, geographic regions, you know, areas of interest if i was you know we're doing this marketing event on december 18th in detroit uh, if you're in the detroit metro area come on by we're more than happy to have you urls up on the screen there uh you know the 
you know, the thing is that I can, I'm targeting this advertising into the Detroit metro area and a 50 mile radius around Detroit. Only the people that are interested in managed services, IT support, computer services, computer repair, that kind of stuff. And you know, what's, I don't even know what my spend is. I, I think I budgeted $500 and I'm, you know, four or five days into it, I think I spent like 20 bucks. You know, it's, you know, it, you, you can really maximize your advertising budget using Facebook ads. And Facebook, you know, I don't have time to do a full demo on this today about it, but they're really easy to set up and very easy to maintain. And again, the price the price is getting more and more expensive to do it because more and more people are starting to enter into it, but it's not to the point of Google AdWords right now where Google AdWords is crazy. By the way, you still need to do Google AdWords if you're doing Facebook advertising, and that's, that's still a must. But, you know, Facebook ads are very, very, uh, you know, powerful if you do it right. And then the other part of, you know, Facebook advertising is Facebook post boosts or boosting posts. And just recently, I've, I have observed that the same criteria for age, language, geographic, area, interest, employers, and much in those other ones follow the suit for posts as well. So this is an ad that we're uh, or a post that we're boosting in um, in Lake Charles, Louisiana, for a company up there, and um, you know it's both their computer repair business, and uh, you know we're sharing that information. It's a a blog post that really just you know points to his uh, you know, that we're we're sharing on there. And what I've actually found is we used to run an ad for this. The engagement on the post is much higher than the advertising. Again, that's too early to really say that's a trend, but it's something that uh, you know we should do. And I and I'm very you know I'm very um, I like the idea uh, of uh, you know boosting posts. All right, uh, you know, next thing is, you know, about Facebook advertising, you, you get some really good, you know, information and uh, and uh, and knowledge back. So I can look at, you know, what are the percentage of men versus women? You know, I can look at you know, location performance. I can look at uh, time of day. I can see, you know, this one example here for the NAD, I see that majority of my um, reach is to men. 51% versus 47%. Uh, I don't think I don't think that equals uh, you know 100%. So maybe there's a few uh, unidentified sex in there. Um, but you know uh, there's you know, you get that immigrate uh, information and you can actually see how much it costs. Men cost more than women to hit. Uh, you know and then who? But the funny thing is, although my reach is higher on the male side, the amount of click-throughs are higher on the female side. So I can start making better decisions on my ad. Maybe I need to change up an image. So knowing that my, you know, or maybe it's the image that's, you know, causing the female side of the business to click through. So there's, you know, there's all, you know, you could look, start looking at all this analytics and start maybe do some split testing and A-B testing, running the same ad, but with different graphics and seeing, okay, which one works best. So without this really good information, it's very hard to make this call, you know. And keep in mind, for every boasted, uh, boasted, boosted post or ad, you need to have a unique landing page. And the reason why I want you to have unique landing pages is so we can measure all this. So when I when I run advertising, I have for every I do this in Google AdWords as well as Facebook, is that I want to have one ad land on one landing page, and I. If I'm going to run another ad, I'll create a replica of the a landing page and put it on a different URL. Because in my analytic program, then I can see, you know, where which which page is performing better than others. I can set up the form so I know which page, you know, which form is generating, you know, different hits. Maybe my call to actions differ on one page versus another. I want to see what's performing better. So that's why I want you to have unique landing pages for everything that you do in the advertising space. And then the next part, you know, I wanted to jump into, you know, this ties into advertising a little bit because you see when I did this one, I'm going to jump back a couple slides. <coughs> when I did this one, it's actually, it's not National Networks who's actually sponsoring the ad. It's Lake Charles Computer Questions and Answers. That's who's actually put the ad up. So you can set up a community page and then run ads through your community page. 
because chances are people actually, you know, look, looking at something that's more generic, like a computer questions and answers type of community page, it'll attract a bit more interest than say a company page. And one of the things that why I like about community pages is it allows me to talk about special interests or, you know, things that are unique to one one set of one community. It allows me to become a community resource and a or I can answer questions or do questions and answers that I can share information. And again, the community pages tie into the advertising. So I, uh, and then, you know, it also allows me to generate my, you know, thought leadership. And uh, it's kind of ties into groups as well. So groups kind of fit into, you know, community pages, so Facebook groups. Uh, I know there's a few people around the call now that are very active in some of the groups that I manage. Uh, but, you know, the whole thought leadership. So now we're moving out of that paid for space and really getting into, you know, the, the sharing of information. So you can, you can again, use your community pages to do that. Community pages are very, very easy to set up. You can have as many community pages as you want. <coughs> I haven't ran across any limitations yet. Uh, same with groups. You can join as many groups and or facilitate or admin as many groups as you want. Uh, posts are another thing. So posts are and notes are kind of the same. You can, well, posts are you can take a blog post and just put a link to it and post it up on your profile or into a group or to a page. And then notes, I've only been able to see notes inside your personal profile, but notes allow you to put a blog post right up into Facebook. Uh, and that's, that's really, that's really powerful as well. So here's an example of that Lake Charles uh, computer question and answers page. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, I put a picture of Lake Charles on it. I, uh, you know, the court, I did the that's the courthouse. And, you know, if you went to, if you went into Facebook and searched for Lake Charles uh, computer questions and answers, you'll see, uh, you know, the, how that page is working. Uh, pretty cool. Then the next thing about it is, you know, it kind of ties, still tied in with advertising, but you don't necessarily, you don't have to boost these. You can boost events as well, but you can also share your event. So we have an event next week with Prairie AIT in Baton Rouge. We're doing a webinar about keeping children safe online. So we're, we, you know, we, what we do with this one, we post the event up there and then we also share the event onto, actually this one we did on local business groups. So we went into Baton Rouge business groups. But we also went to uh, mother and mom's groups because they're, you know, those are the ones that are concerned about, you know, kids being safe online. Do you not think that moms and mothers and parents and guardians work somewhere? You know, so, you know, we're, you know, we're just getting our toe in the door. It's not necessarily always talking about cybersecurity or backup and disaster recovery or voice over IP telephones. We're sharing relevant information that the community cares about, and that's why we're that's why we're you know promoting a webinar like this. But we share this webinar across Facebook because again, we're looking at getting ourselves positioned as a thought leader and opening up new doors into our uh, into our opportunity. Again, we just want to get names onto a list, so you can post uh, you know promote your events personally into groups, pages, and you can actually tie ads into your events as well. So you can actually boost an event through advertising and target uh, those demographics that you want to target. So, you know, kind of, you know, wrap it up on business groups here. You can join as many business groups as you want. So this one is hard to see, but this is a Calgary group and CTEC Consulting Group is a big Microsoft Office 365 firm in Calgary. And so they actually posted this video of Office 365 up onto a Facebook group. So you can actually post videos into Facebook groups. And I, I know I mentioned uh, Chris Michaluk earlier. Uh, I'm sure Chris won't mind if I, you know, share, uh, you know, his stuff. And, I, and Chris, I haven't seen any videos from you in a while, so you must have been busy. But Chris did, Chris did some really good videos up on Facebook, and he puts them up on his personal profile, and he shares them in other places. And, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, a great way of using, you know, Facebook to market, you know, market your business. Again, marketing is all about creating demand, right? So if you can get as many eyeballs to see your see your stuff, that's great. And you know, especially on this one here, this example, the ctechgroup.ca, we're just pointing them back to the root of the website. But I can look in my analytics program and see how many hits I got from from Facebook, and make an assumption that uh, you know maybe they came from this Facebook group. The nice thing about 
groups and you actually managing your own group. So this is a, a group that Tim Richter and I started in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. You know, we have this group, uh, you know, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina business professionals. And we share relative, you know, business information with uh, the community. I think we have uh, probably 75 or so uh, members now because we don't actually actively promote it, but it, it gets, uh, it comes out every once in a while with new members. But the, the first thing that you see here is a pin video of what that Tim did with WRAL in Raleigh when he was interviewed on TV about some, uh, some uh, ransomware that was spreading. I think it was around the water cry uh, time frame. But the thing with groups is that you control the environment. So invite, you know, invite people that you know, invite your clients, invite your prospects to join in these communities. You know, it's not always about, you know, the, again, the transactional side of our business. Business today is all done through relationships. You know, I don't know if this has ever happened to anyone where they got a referral and the person on the phone says, yeah, John, John over at this company said you guys are the best IT company to use and you hang up the phone and go, who the heck is John? You know, I have no idea who that is. It happens when you build, start building relationships and start positioning yourself as the thought expert, the thought leader. And, um, you know, that's very, very important. So, again, I know um, there's a couple guys on the on the phone here. I can see by the names. Uh, uh, one uh, John is on, and John does a, something similar in uh, his community. And um, I haven't spoke to him a while about it, but I'm sure it's, you know, I see it very active, and there's a lot of things getting shared up there in North Dakota. So he's doing the same thing. Some of other clients have set uh, community, you know, set up pages and groups, talk about healthcare, you know, and, and just giving general advice on HIPAA compliance and different things about healthcare and IT and inviting medical professionals. Because here's the thing <coughs> that I'm realizing on social media. When you get on the social media, people's guards start coming down. So if you try to telemarket to them and talk about, you want to talk about doing a HIPAA assessment, they're a, little, they're a little bit more guarded to that. Uh, if you send them a postcard or a sales letter with the same thing, the chances of that being successful are pretty slim. But what I'm finding is if you can offer advice and be that expert and share information that's not super promotional, that's the key. You don't want to be overly salesy, but share good information. There's, there is a new level of engagement being realized here that people are starting. But... The thing is, if you're in for the quick hit, if you're like that druggie on the corner of the street that needs a quick hit, this isn't for you. You need to be patient and do your time, you know, and spend the time to do it properly. It'll take, you know, months, if not a, maybe even more than a couple of years to start really getting this to pay off. And you got to be patient and do it, you know, do it. That's why I say don't abandon every other, everything. I also do marketing, but you have to be patient and do your time. If you're one of these quick hitter type guys, I'm sorry, you're going to be very disappointed. You're going to abandon it within a couple months and say it, it didn't work, just like everything else I do in my marketing. You know, I, and usually when I talk to people about that and say, you know, you know, why you have so many marketing failures, is usually the same beha behavior. They they abandon their marketing efforts way too early. You know, marketing done right takes time to to do properly. So. And we already talked about sharing videos on, uh, you know, on your uh, Facebook pages. And I gave you a few examples. You can throw videos up on there. Uh, what, here's a tip for you. Don't link to a YouTube video. For some reason, Facebook doesn't like that. Maybe because they got this little lover's tiff with, with Google. But uh, upload the raw video footage right to, um, right to Facebook. And I'll give you a couple examples of companies that are doing that extremely well. Uh, Colorado Computer Support in Colorado Springs. Every Tuesday, they put on a Tech Tip Tuesday video. And it's really a minute to minute and a half video. It's nothing professional grade at all. It, it's good. It's very well done. But it's not the, you know, the professional videographers. It's Blake and Curtis, you know, up there with their smartphone camera doing a quick video and they're talking about things that they're seeing, you know, things that they see with their clients and is sharing that wealth. Uh, one of the things that we do at Ulistic is we provide a marketing video every month uh, as part of our marketing in a box and with our, you know, different levels of service. So there's that, I think we've been um, 
we did one in Office 365 last month. Uh, September's is going to be entitled "Ripping Off the Bandaid," and the why is you know why you have to fire your IT guy, and it's sometimes as painful as ripping off a bandaid, but that pain subsides. You know, you know your mother or father used to tell, "Just rip it off," because it's going to hurt more if you take it, do it slow. We kind of taken that approach and you know made it fun, right? But we can use those videos in your in your Facebook, right? So you know if you wanted to look at you know, signing up for a marketing in a box. Uh, we can talk about that after and you get that you get that video. You know, you can put blog content. So here's a blog uh, that we that we shared on uh, on, our, on, on my personal Facebook uh, page around, you know, what what's the priority of your first hire, right? So um, you can put all this content up on there. I just want to check the time. So it's almost 245. So um, one of the things you can do and this is, you know, uh, a tool I, I, I highly endorse called dlvr.it. It's a great tool that allows you to hook in your blog to your social media platforms. And I, and I think it's like free for up to certain, you know, three or four or five different social media connections. And then it's dirt cheap. Like, I mean, I paid 20 bucks and I got 500 connections. So it's real cheap. It's a good tool to have. Uh, to you know, automate some posting of your blog material, and we post this into you know, nice thing about controlling groups and pages is now I can actually use these syndication services to automatically post content into them, so I don't necessarily have to look at it every single day. Then there's automation services that you can tie into. So uh, Hootsuite, Get Spokal, Buffer, Sprout Social, or you know some of the other ones that we're aware of. You know, if you want to just have a platform to manage all of this, um, I'm just kind of introducing some of these to you. I'm not going to go into any detail on them at all, but just to let you know that they exist. <laughs> and then you know, make sure that you have a social media calendar so that you know you can uh, you know what you're going to post on every day. So Trish. Who is my social media manager at Ulysses? Does a wonderful job putting this uh, spread, uh, spreadsheet together, and again, it's included in our starting in September in our marketing box for ninety-seven dollars a month. That's a really good deal, folks. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Um, you know, we put this all together. We actually give you the stuff that you can link to, and we're actually going to give you all the graphics, so you don't. Have, you know, if, for those people that just wanted something that's very easy to do, again. But again, the thing is. Make sure you have a calendar that you do. If you're if you're not going to utilize something like this, that you have a calendar that you can uh, that you can use to make all this happen. My recommendation again: be yourself. You know, all of social media is all about you being yourself. Uh, keep your left and right opinions to yourself. Nobody really cares. Um, people will decide to work with you regardless. Uh, remind your friends that you are a professional. So if you have your buddies from college on there may want to uh you know just keep that a little you know remind them that you're running a business and you're a professional and i'm not a big fan of se uh, separate profiles why bother having separate profiles just keep everything under one profile and just you know be yourself uh and then as just a reminder build those robust networks everybody that you meet should go onto your social media platforms linkedin facebook twitter um those are the big three uh, depend again. It depends uh, depends on your audience. Um, you know, if you're 20 something, you guys may have a whole different social network like Pinterest or Snapchat that you can look at. But you know, the theory is the same: build robust networks and connect with clients, prospect vendors, and influencers. I forgot, I forgot about mentioning vendors earlier, but make sure your vendors are on your uh, your friends list as well. And then one last piece of Facebook that I really love. And this is a conversation from last night. You know, I love the I love direct direct messaging. You know why I love direct messaging? Because it bypasses spam filters. I can have a chat with anybody on uh, you know on a direct message as long as they're you know, they don't even have to be a friend of mine. As long as they have it turned on, I can actually connect with them and send them a direct message. I love love that. And there are some tools now that are actually making it available. That if somebody likes your page, those community pages and your business pages we we're talking about, you can actually have a bot that actually replies to and engage with them uh, without you actually having to be involved. You be careful with anything with with bots, but uh, you know, you look at these conversations; they're all you know some 
Some of them are a little technical. Some of them are being a little bit more, um, you know, casual. And one person I talked about going to Detroit with. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, that's what I love about Facebook. It allows me a chance to build good relationships with people. And then, you know, there's so much more to Facebook than just marketing and ads. You know, there's some great people out there who are, you know, promoting advertising on Facebook. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't look at them and all that. But, you know, there's so much more to Facebook than just doing ads. And, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff you can do at zero cost. That's the beauty thing about Facebook is that it's, it's relatively inexpensive, if not free. Demonstrate your, you know, thought leadership, your technical and business leadership at all times. And the next step, if you're interested, is to book a consultation with me. I'll go through this a little bit more detail with you. <laughs> There's the uh, email address. You can, if you're interested in the marketing of box, again, that was $97. It's really good, affordable rate. Um, and it's what's month to month, so it's no, you're not locked in for a long period of time. If you're already a client of ours, you should already have this. But we put in videos, PDFs that you can offer as downloads, uh, that social media calendar. And if you don't, any of this stuff doesn't interest you, just join our VIP club at Ulysses.com and we'll have more, you know, we'll share uh, relative information with you. So with that, I want to say thank you. And I'm going to turn it back over to Sarah to see if we have any questions. <laughs> 